Hello everyone, there is NLP Radio on stream. And uh, we are talking here in our studio, Alexander Gerasimov, our NLP trainer, and me, Olga Sarkisva, I'm a linguist and a philologist. Hello, Alexander. Uh, hello, hello, Olga. Uh, so, what we are going to do, first of all, is to introduce you our new season of NLP Radio. This is the same project, but in a new format. First of all, we are targeting at Russian-speaking audience. Uh, for those who would like to improve their English with us and maybe study something new from the NLP area. And also for English-speaking audience, of course. So, first of all, I'd like to introduce our guest. Alexander Gerasimov is a very well-known negotiator in Russia, NLP master, NLP trainer. Uh, the geography of trainings and seminars he has led is 22 countries and 69 cities. Wow, Alexander, this impressive. Uh, Thank you. We'd like to tell you that we have learned a lot of information from American NLP trainers, uh, American books by NLP, and uh, we have prepared something from these products, and now we've got something to treat you with. We've cooked something for you. I'm sure that's going to be interesting and exciting. The topic we're discussing today is building a rapport and building trust. So the first question, Alexander, what is actually a rapport? Uh, what is it? What is building a trust? Rapport можно воспринимать... NLP rapper can be considered in two formats. The first one I suggest that we should consider rapper as a feeling of confidence when a person trusts another person. Rapper is a rather immeasurable thing which can be tested through sensations. For example, there are surely some people who you, Olga, trust more than other people, and you surely distinguish the difference through your internal state. And on the one hand, on the other hand, we can measure it, for example, in some situations. For example, you would eagerly invite some person to your house, go to a restaurant with that person mm -hmm. or lend him or her some money, while as for another person you wouldn't. So there are such rapper or trust measurement methods. This is the first aspect of rapper. There is another aspect of rapper, I would call it negotiation aspect. In this case rapper means availability of a contact of relations. For example, a phone rings, a person picks up and conversation begins. It is a salesman who wants to sell something, and the person who is receiving the call can at any time hang up the phone. In this case, I would say there is no rapper. In this aspect, rapper means impossibility to discontinue communication. So, rapper implies a very good, robust contact when a person can do nothing to discontinue communication. This is the second meaning of rapper. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very interesting. I've got an insight. I believe I've got an insight. So the question is, uh, if we have rapport already built, it means we cannot by any means in any way come out of it. That's a very interesting point. Okay, I'm sure there are many ways and different ways how to arouse this trust. How to arouse this trust. How many ways are there? Are there any special methods to achieve this feeling of trust? I didn't count all those methods, but approximately I can easily recall about 20, 15 up to 25 techniques for building rapper using a vast variety of parameters. Those may be just visual elements such as, for example, posture. 
For example, gestures, gaze direction, closing. Those may be so-called audio parameters, speech rate, speech intensity, and voice pitch. It may be values for matching. For example, the, ver the value of health. It is critical for some people and they club together and trust each other more than they trust those who don't value their health. For some people, those may be geographical elements. For example, Moscow is a rather big city and when two persons from the same town or city meet each other there, their trust will instinctively increase. I could name a fair number of such parameters, and each one helps them narrow a gap in their communication between each other. Mm -hmm. uh, do you mean to say that people uh, deliberately choose this uh, values or criteria or does it happen uh, unconsciously and deliberately do we choose deliberately which way to use well, we, we are so to say flocking species it is easier to ask to be in rapper than not to be in rapper человек может быть вы даже замечали когда вы приходите в какую-то компанию людей то некоторые из них уже сразу находятся в рапорте. И таким образом можно даже понять, кто с каким человеком so в отношении, внутри этой компании. Допустим, вы заходите в дне рождения к своему другу, там сидит 8 человек в помещении, Двое-трое сидят, закинув нога на ногу, еще двое стоят у окна в одинаковых абсолютно позах. Мы понимаем, что вот здесь есть вот эти вот группы, которые как языком тела показывают, что они друг другу интересны. И я бы назвал это двое-трое сидят, закинув нога на ногу, еще двое стоят у окна в одинаковых абсолютно позах. Мы понимаем, что I would call it вот здесь a natural state for each person. Yeah, rapper can be uh, built да, deliberately, intentionally. Mm -hmm. To take the same posture, to, to speak same using the same intonation, uh, using breathing, blinking and other parameters. And then the speed of establishing rapper will be higher. I suggest that people should take control over this process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, looks like what we are talking now is called uh, matching. Uh, it's called matching, I believe. So we are approaching it. Could you say a few words about what is matching and uh, what does it mean to match, to tune up, to some kind of adjust for a person? What is this process? How can we do it? Matching is a process of parameter matching. For example, you enter a room and there is a person sitting there. At first you can sit taking the same posture. Then you can start mimicking his or her gestures. After that you can express the same emotion on your face, which that person is talking through and so begin to step by step matching parameters. And there will be a point, a moment, when the person starts trusting you. So we can say that matching is a process aimed at establishing rapper that you can use however you want, depending on your purpose. It is a process of parameter matching. Okay, uh, the question which is very logical uh, flowing from what you say is um, there are lots of people in the world like Southend and millions of people in the world and I'm sure there are some definite ways for each. So how do we understand? How can we identify for which person, which method should we use? How do we match to these or that kind of person? Well, everything depends on your goals. I mean, the process of matching and establishing rapper is a tool for achieving our 
certain goals. Matching implies selecting certain parameters for building trust. For example, when you are having a phone conversation, it is reasonable to match using audio parameters. When you visit an office for business purposes, there is a Russian proverb which could be translated like first you judge how nice, then you judge how wise. Yes, it's typically very Russian. Mm -hmm. In this case, it is critical to use external parameters, so-called dress code. When you are going to visit some space, for example a party, people will most likely expect you to have a somewhat relaxed style. There is no any universal matching method. It's rather about choosing communication context, a purpose, which role we would like to play in this community, our personal goal, what result we want to eventually achieve, and then picking an appropriate rapper building method. Do I understand correctly that the main idea in all that you say is our own personal goal? So everything depends on our personal goal, the way chosen, the method, the style. It all depends on what we want, first yes. of all. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now uh, the next interesting point I'd like to figure out is um, how can we figure out the criteria which we choose uh, for matching, for tuning up with a person. How can we find them out? There is an NLP term calibration. In a common human language, calibration means the power of observation, the ability to notice details and the ability to notice differences. Calibration is observation, being watchful. Okay. In order to distinguish what matters to a person, what are his or her criteria, what are his or her values, we could use for matching. I suggest that we should very carefully observe that person. People are always talking only about what they are really interested in, and they hear only what they are interested in. If, for example, the health topic is critical to a person, all talks will be about his or her health. If a person has a hobby, which is currently very important to him, he will constantly mention it. Anyhow, making it clear that it is critical to him. However, apart from what a person is saying, there are things that a person is showing. For example, we can distinguish whether or not a person values his or her health before that person starts talking. Well, I believe we can if we are really observant enough and if we have a purpose in our mind to see it. If we are attentive enough, then I believe we can. Uh, or, for example... Uh, so, looking at significant points and being very observant, very observant, that's the most important to figure out the criteria. Right, okay, but I believe it comes with experience. I believe it comes with experience, right? It cannot come just like this from the first time. If we are not an NLPer, we can be not that distinct in our observations as well. Can we? Sure. It reminds me an anecdote about a young guy with a violin who has lost his way in New York and stopped to ask an old Jew where he should go. Tell me, please, how could I get to Carnegie Hall? That sophisticated, wise, inexperienced person looked at the young man, saw a violin in his hands and said, practice, practice, and once again, practice, young man. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Experience is the mother of wisdom. Experience is the mother of wisdom. The more we practice, the sooner it becomes our unconscious skill. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, I see. But I'm sure it requires quite a lot of time. Quite a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's let's continue talking about matching and uh, calibration. Um, you have said that it's very possible to make out a skill out of it. I understand. Okay, so the more we practice, the quicker we come to a skill, developed skill. Uh, I have heard, Alexander, I have heard such... Uh, a term as a role report. Role report. Would you please explain what is this? There is a direct rapper when we can say I am you and you are me. Or like in Kipling's Mowgli stories, we are the same blood, you and I. Animals said that to show that they are equal and united. Role rapper is relationship rapper. For example, there is a phrase, it's the retinue that makes the king. If there were no retinue, there would not be a king. It's applicable to other contexts. If there were no patient, there would not be a doctor. If there were no policeman, there would not be a criminal. If there were no children, there would not be parents, and these pairs seem to complement each other to some integrity, and integrity participating in some process. So, role rapper is rapper that allows people to complement each other. For example, a subordinate and his supervisor, they both are interacting with each other, and one of them is playing the role of a boss, and the other one is playing a role of a person that's subordinate to him, they both, oddly enough, feel good and happy complementing each other and playing their roles, and this contact can be called role rapper. I see. So, as far as I understand, it's kind of a... Uh, mm, interaction of two or more elements, two or more, or only two, how many elements could be in this system? The number of roles can be unlimited. Mm -hmm. It may be two, three or five roles. For example, in a closed system, for example, a school class, surely there is a leader who plays the role of a leader. There is a joker and there is a so-called omega, who everyone is talking it out on. There is an owner student, there is a slacker who is always cheating and each one plays a role. And there is certain specificity when some role is lost. Someone else, the currently most appropriate to his role, begins to play it. So there are so-called systematic laws, group laws, which don't apply, for example, to a single person. I see. So there can be as many elements as possible. And all those elements are adding to each other to make a complete one. Yeah, yeah I see. That's... Wow, that's exciting. Uh, let's move on. Um, if you say that there is a role wrapper and all elements inside the system play their particular role, so I'm sure there can be different kinds of role wrapper. Kinds. How many possible kinds could there be? It's difficult to count those, too. In simple, rather primitive meaning, there are at least two roles. One plays the superior role and the other plays the inferior role. For example, in resource distribution, a boss takes the superior role. He has more resources than his subordinate, who takes, very relatively speaking, the inferior role. So, here we have two roles. If we take a more complicated system, for example, an office or some business, where there are many roles, a role of sales representative, a role of purchasing agent, a role of marketing expert, a role of office assistant, a role of a boss, a role of a security service, and so on. 
All these are kinds of role wrapper which will be depending on played roles. Okay, but uh, from what I understand now, there can be not only one is superior and one is inferior. There can be different ways of role report, right? Yes, I would also like to say that we are controlled by things that we are not conscious about. Very often when a person finds himself in a system, in an office or in another group, he suddenly begins to play a role. Maybe he didn't want to or, for example, he could resist, but as far as system is stronger than its components, it may make him play a certain role, the most typical to him role. Or could there be a role which is not typical for a person, something new for him, he has never played before? Well, for example, the same example of an office when a sudden visitor is asked to insert paper into a printer. He maybe is not accustomed to do it, but he has to play this role. He plays a role, for example, of a newcomer. I see. Okay. Okay. Uh, this is a point which makes me think. This is a point which causes my thinking process and definitely I'll get many more questions to that. But let's move on. Let's move on. Mm, I have heard also, you know, I have heard so much of NLP and I've got so many questions for you. I have heard as such a phenomenon as lead, a lead in NLP. And I think it uh, is connected directly with the topic we are discussing. If there is a role rapport, then definitely there must be a lead. What is it and how to do it? Let's once again return to the beginning of the process of matching. We are matching and in some moment the rapper, a feeling of trust in the first meaning is established. It is very comfortable and a person being in rapper gets relaxed. He realizes that he is at his place and he feels good and he wants to stay in this state. I feel a definition of rapper which sounds as follows. Rapper is a single eye for two persons. A person being in rapper will be maintaining this state. Imagine that someone, let us use metaphors, for example, two persons begin to communicate with each other and they are linked by a rope. This rope is exactly an impossibility to discontinue the communication. Suddenly one of the linked persons, like, for example, mountain climbers linked by a single rope, starts moving in some direction. The other one will have to follow him. In a real situation, if he doesn't want to move, he has to get unlinked and to stop moving. However, Physiologically, it is very difficult to do. So when we have established rapper with a person and we start changing somehow, for example, expressing a certain viewpoint, which is different from that person's viewpoint, or feeling some new sensations that person wants to retain, the state of a, of a comfortable conditional homeostasis will follow us in this direction. Yeah, to follow him. Right? To it's like if we had taken his hand and lead him to another room. Metaphorically, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that leading is also a great skill which can be developed and acquired. Uh, how do we feel? At which point of time do we feel that we have started to lead? When in our rapport do we feel that, okay, now I am leading, how to understand it? There is no any certain point after which we could surely say that now we can lead. You may start leading as soon as you feel that you are in rapport. Mm -hmm. And to see if a person is not lead, you need some more rapport. There is no specific recommendation like you should start leading on the fifth minute of conversation or on the fifth minute of rapper. 
In some cases, you start leading almost without being in rapper, and a person begins to be led without realizing what is happening. For some reasons, some people believe that being led is bad, that it means being weak or dependent. But actually, it is not true. In some manipulative cases, a person is giving up intentionally and is willing to be led. It's a kind of a game which both elements play together. Yes. For example, in a male-female communication, a woman will be saying, oh, I don't know, I will think it over. A man will be showing initiative leading. She will then say, okay, you have convinced me. But actually it was her initiative to let him lead her. Yeah, definitely, I can see that. Uh, do we have time for one more question? Yes, okay. sure. Uh, there is something maybe a little bit deeper if I go into that, but still, uh, I would like to touch upon this topic. I have heard in uh, the Russian version of NLP radio and uh, on trainings, I have been on Alexander's trainings, such a word combination as imprint, imprinted experience. And I have heard you say that it's possible to match according to imprinted negative experience of another person. Uh, could you maybe say something about it? Is it something very difficult, very complicated to understand that imprint and try to match according to it? Imprint, imprint as a significant experience or period of life from the past in which a person formed a belief or cluster of beliefs. In terms of NLP, it is a very powerful and complete process. In NLP, we can... Imprint as a significant experience or method of life from the past in which a person formed a belief or cluster of beliefs. In terms of NLP, it is a very powerful, incomplete process. In NLP, we call it TOAT. Imprint matching is TOAT printing. For example, a person has an imprint of a leader. For example, in his childhood, he was in a situation and came to a conclusion, the situation was very critical to him, that it's very important to be the first, or you are the first and you have nothing. For example, it was a seven, eight, nine-year-old kid. He took part in a competition, lost it, and his parent, or credible adult, told him that it was critical to be the first. There are only two places, either the first or the last. The kid remembered this situation and an inner dynamics. A wish to always be the first remain in him. Later, wherever he is, he could forget about that experience. Wherever he is, he will always want to be the first. Maybe you have met such persons who like to compete anywhere. We have invented a word me tooing. Yeah, it's a typically Russian expression. Mm -hmm. It means being similar to a person. It is me plus two, me too, me tooing. Yeah. I will say a few words about etymology. In the Russian language, the word тоже means also, as well, the same way, the identical way. Uh, so, when we say тожиться, it's a verb which comes from this identically, the same way, which means uh, we are the same, we are identical. It's a very cool, cool expression. Mm -hmm. Yes, in this case, me doing means saying, oh, the same with me, I cannot take second or any other place. This is imprint matching. 
There are two options in this case. Either a person begins to compete with you and takes you as an imprint element, or the second option, when we tell him, I am absolutely like you, and he understands us. It also arouses certain trust, as it is lifestyle, skill and other parameters similarity. Mm -hmm. So you say that there is an inner dynamic inside the person. Am I right uh, understanding that an imprint is some kind of emotionally colored emotionally colored event or impression in the childhood of a person not necessarily childhood yes, could yes. Be in adult yes. life uh -huh. but i think that matching matching by imprints it's a very high level of nlp skills am i right Yes, I agree yeah, with you. Matching skills mean that you are at a rather serious level. But I would recommend that our listeners, specifically those beginners, should train rather simple skills, such as visual parameters, posture and gestures, audio parameters, speech rate and intensity, and value revealing matching, or using the me tooing approach, like I have the same situation, or it is critical to me too, I've also been there, and so on. Uh, am I right, Alexander, that to understand and figure out uh, values is easier than to figure out an imprint? Values are literally on the surface. If you take an iceberg as a metaphor, imprint is the invisible part of an iceberg, while values are the visible external part of an iceberg. You can figure out one's values just through listening to him. A person will anyhow highlight his or her values either by intonation or even by clapping or tapping his foot, showing a thumb up, Values are what a person will be talking permanently. Imprint is rather a source of those values. For example, an event occurred. A person's value was violent, and that person willing that experience to not repeat. If we are talking about imprint as an unpleasant experience, will be protecting those values harder, and in case of any attack or a hint on attack on this value, he will protect and he will protect it and react emotionally, such as, for example, fear, anger, or something like that. So the first, what we see is values of a person. And if we begin to explore the matter deeper, to figure out where those values come from, we will sooner or later come to that person's imprint. Uh, okay, we can see uh, how powerful is a real uh, NLP uh, master. If you are an NLP master, if you have mastered all those skills, a great power is in your hands, I believe. Uh, thank you, Alexander. We have discussed today such a phenomenon as uh, matching to a person, tuning up to him, building up a rapport, um, different ways of building rapport, criteria which we can choose, uh, developing different skills. Uh, we have talked about role rapport, about kinds of it, uh, about a lead, about values and imprints. There has been a lot uh, we've discussed. Uh, and if you got questions for Alexander Gerasimov, for maybe our further, further uh, topics for discussion, or maybe we can continue discussing a rapport, you are very welcome with your questions. You can uh, write them down. Thanks to our participants. You are welcome to like this video and to share it with other people, your friends and listeners. Mm -hmm. We will continue this series. Mm -hmm. We will continue. We will go on with you. Reposts and likes are very welcome. And um, let's hear each other in the next program. Bye, all. Bye. Thank you.